wondering if God had forgotten him. And God gave him a view of heaven as it will be forever and ever as he looked through the open door. You may be seated. I challenge you to capture in your imagination the sights John was allowed to see. The Lamb of God bids us to come and worship. And he wants us to stand before his throne and sing praises and to experience the liberation that comes when a divine perspective takes root within us. Stop for a moment and think, all of the craziness that's going on in our world today, economic downturn, the stock market in trouble, war on every hand, uh, terrorism at the door. And you know what I thought about when I read this? I don't know if you saw this. He looked and he saw a throne set in heaven and somebody was on the throne. <laughs> Amen. You know, the world's coming unglued, but God's still on the throne. When you begin to see life through the open door of heaven, everything is touched and changed. There won't be any preaching in heaven because the Bible says we're going to know everything that we need to know. We're going to be know, knowing as we're known. We'll have perfect knowledge of who God is. There won't be any praying in heaven because we will already have everything that we desire from God. But the Bible says there's going to be praise in heaven, and it's going to occupy us for eternity. You know what, if that's something that's going to be ours for eternity, it ought to be something pretty important to us down here, don't you think? We ought to come to church with a spirit of praise and worship. We ought to start each day with a spirit of worship and prayer. The earth grows strangely dim with eternity's values in view, says the chorus. That ought to be our heart as well. So the invitation I want to give you to this new perspective, added to the invitation of this new power, is that when you attain the perspective of heaven, you begin to be aware of the infinite difference between the eternal and the temporal. Temporal matters weigh us down, but in light of eternity, they're small indeed. Over and over in the scripture, the metaphors are used to try to help us understand that this life is like a breath on a cold day. It disappears. It's like a handbreadth, the link between your little finger and your thumb. It's like smoke ascending to heaven. It's like a flower that it grows and fades away. But eternity, the vastness of it, the greatness of it, the grandeur of it, the beauty of it, the joy of it, should dominate our thinking, and that's what praise does for us. Praise lifts us up off of the earth's perspective into the perspective of who God is. When we truly worship and praise God and we see him high and lifted up, it lifts us up into that perspective. When we worship, if that doesn't happen to us, then you're missing what worship is all about. Perhaps you've stood like I did at the Grand Canyon or you've been at the highest point of the Rocky Mountains and found yourself unable to speak. It's healthy to take in the larger perspective. We live our lives more and more in little cubicles. We think small thoughts and we indulge in small pleasures. And God wants so much more for us. He wants us to find the ultimate joy that is only attainable through an eternal perspective, looking at life with the end in view. So, Pastor Jeremiah, how do I develop this spirit in my heart? You know that I like to ask this question as a preacher when I talk about things like this that maybe are a little bit deeper than the practical issues we often discuss. The question is, so what? So what if we see heaven and so what if we understand life through eternal perspective? How do we cultivate that? What do we do about it now? Help me, Pastor. I want to go there, but I don't know how. Paul gives us a clue in Colossians when he says, if you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting on the right hand. Set your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth. I recommend that you select a few of these suggestions I'm going to give you and put them into practice and become a daily lifestyle worshiper. First of all, you should know that you can praise God through music and you don't have to be in the choir. All of us can sing, amen? All of us can sing. Listen to Psalm 95, 1 to 3. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms, for the Lord is the great God and all the king above all gods. I depend on godly music and worship, and I recommend that you do the same. Get yourself a CD that has music that you relate to that helps you to praise God, and then stay with it for a while until you get acquainted with it. And then you don't have to have a CD player. You can play it on the CD of your mind wherever you are and worship God and praise him throughout the day. Have you done that? I know that I'm assuming that probably most of you do that, but I just want to mention it. Praise God through scripture memory. You say, Pastor Jeremiah, don't, don't start down that road. I can't remember where I live and you want me to uh, <laughs> memorize the scripture. Well, I'm not talking about memorizing the book of Revelation or the book of Psalms or anything like that, but you know what? There are some wonderful passages you can remember. Just take one, type it out on a card, carry it with you through the day. Before you start memorizing it, ask God to make it really meaningful to you because then it'll be easy to memorize. Understand what it means. The Word of God can become a part of your life each day. You got the music of God pumping through your brain. You got the Word of God coming into your heart. And then I'd like to suggest something that I found one day when I was reading the Psalms. Praise God in daily intervals. Have some checkpoints along the way. I don't mean a checklist, but a checkpoint. Listen to what it says in Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgment. You say, seven times a day? Well, I think this is a great, a great checkpoint for us who want to learn how to worship God as a lifestyle. Here's how you do it. Praise him when you get up in the morning. Praise him when you eat breakfast. Praise him in your coffee break between lunch and breakfast. Praise him at lunch. Praise him in your afternoon coffee break. Praise him at dinner time and praise him before you go to bed. Seven times a day will I praise you. Some of you would never miss a coffee break. I mean, you just would never, or whatever, a, a tea break or a Coke break. Just remember when you go for that break, oh yes, Pastor Jeremiah said this is a time when I can just offer up some praise to God. Praise him in the traffic as you drive home. Can you imagine how our freeways would change instead of that booming sound that comes out of some of these vehicles that sneak up on behind you and you feel like the ground is about to open up and take you out of this world? They're playing the praise music of heaven. Let me give you another suggestion. Praise God through visual reminders. Psalm 26, 3 says, Your loving kindness is before my eyes. You know, we, we need a few good billboards that we can remember. Place them strategically around the house. I know you gals have a refrigerator thing you do with magnets all over it, you know, and your kids are there and, and, and your schedule's there. Well, Get a little praise motto and put it there so that when you see it, put one on the mirror in the bathroom or on the visor in your car. Keep a favorite psalm taped to your computer terminal. Put a reminder in a place where you're apt to see it during the day just to jog your memory that I want to spend my life praising God. One of the great ways to enhance your praise life apart from what happens on Sundays, to get in a small group with others who are committed to that. And when you get together week by week, just spend some time praising God. What a thrill that will be for you. Get some like-minded friends who want to develop this. I guarantee you that if you try two or three of these things, just put one of them into operation, it'll change your life. It'll lift you up. It'll keep you from getting pulled into the vortex of all the discouraging news of our day. And it will remind you that we are not the living on our way to the dying. We are the dying on our way to the living. And the best is yet to come for eternity. I heard about an old man who worked in the evenings cleaning an office building. Jim, an executive, would often work until after dark. He'd catch a glimpse of this old timer arriving with his mops, his brooms, and an infectious smile. Jim was under a great deal of stress. He was putting in countless hours, but he couldn't seem to climb the executive ladder with the speed that he desired he was becoming moody, often depressed, and one evening when there was no one in the building but himself and the old man, he paused to watch as this old janitor 
headed for the bathroom to perform the usual cleaning rituals. Jim shook his head unbelievingly. He said, I don't know how you can derive so much enjoyment from scrubbing a latrine. He said, what would it take to drive that smile off your face? Have you ever noticed that when you're miserable, you don't want anybody else to be anything other than miserable too? (laughs) The janitor laughed. He wasn't offended. He, He never thought about that question. He said, sir, I really never thought about that. I used to have some jobs that were prettier ones, I guess. I drove me a truck. That was good pay. Lots of hours talking to Jesus. But times were bad, and I lost that job, and after that I worked in the public park, and I like that too, plenty of sunshine. Best of all, when I took that job, Jesus came with me. I could talk things over with him when I raked the leaves and picked up the litter. That was nice, but that job didn't last either. Life is tough, isn't it, said Jim. (laughs) Oh, I don't know about that, the janitor said with a smile. I'm indoors now, and that's nice when it's cold and rainy, dark and lonely sometimes, but Jesus is there whenever I call for him. He would never leave me nor forsake me. Know what I mean? I don't know, maybe I'd feel differently about cleaning a toilet if the Lord Jesus didn't stay by my side. He walks with me and he talks with me, and the whole time, sir, I'm actually getting paid. The way I look at it, why shouldn't I be smiling? Elizabeth Barrett Browning put it like this in these beautiful words. She said, Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around and pluck blackberries. I don't know what you see in the bushes around you, a consuming fire of heaven or just blackberries, but I know it will make the difference. It's a question of eternal perspective. If you see God in your life, if you long to put him not on the periphery of your life, not on the circumference, but at the very center. If you commit yourself to worshiping him, if you practice his presence in your life every day, if you realize that this is not about religion, it's about a relationship, that God does go with you wherever you go. Praise him and talk to him. Don't always just be asking him. Thanking him and praising him works too. Wherever you go, you will find that it's a fine place to be. And whatever you do, you will be filled with an irrepressible joy because you will know that you are in the company of Almighty God. That's what worship is. It's living your life in the presence of God. Amen. I have found that when you worship God with your life, you'll find an eternal perspective taking root in your soul you'll begin to see this world through heavenly eyes. And whatever you do will be filled with joy because you're in the company of the King. Maybe you've been watching this telecast and you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity. Today, you can choose heaven by making the decision to follow Christ. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your savior, you can do so today. All you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive your sin. Eternal life can be yours, not because of anything you've done, but solely by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. تشاهد قناة الملكوت على هوتبرد و 9 على هوتبرد في تردد 11471 و 9 بتردد 11355 نتمنى لكم مشاهدة ممتعة